Alright, um, this is DIY Electronics with um, LEDs. I'm going to explain the basics of LEDs, how to calculate the resistance, and um, give you an example of how to make an LED glow using um, the formula to calculate the resistance. Um, we're also going to go into Ohm's Law a little bit. I'm going to explain to you how to calculate voltage, resistance, and current. <coughs> Alright, start off, um, let's go over Ohm's Law. All right, Ohm's law. Ohm's law is E equals I times R. E stands for voltage. I stands for current or amperage, and um, R stands for resistance or ohms. All right. Now, you can rearrange this formula in a few different ways. Um, that's calculating for voltage, knowing your current and your resistance. You can also count for, or uh, figure out your current if you know your voltage and resistance. So you take your voltage, or E, divided by your resistance. Let me just stick to the same. I equals E divided by R. Okay. And then if you want to calculate for resistance, resistance equals E divided by I. So, Alright, and a simple way to memorize this is take a little circle, draw it like that, and put voltage, current, and resistance. And if you want to solve for one, you cover up one of them. So if you're solving for a current, it equals voltage divided by resistance, which is voltage divided by resistance. So if you're solving for voltage, it equals I times R. This is a simple way to remember the formula. Um, well, let me draw that up here. V. All right. Let's um do a little practice. Um, let's say you have a current of 1 amp and a resistance of 10 ohms. So we're going to times that and you're going to get your voltage is going to equal 10 volts. Okay, so now let's say you don't know the amperage but you know you got 10 volts and you got 10 ohms. Well. 10 divided by 10 is 1 amp. Okay, now you don't know the resistance, but you know the voltage and the amperage. Okay, the voltage is 10 volts. Your amperage is 1 amp. That's going to equal 10 ohms. It's amazing. Formulas actually work. <laughs> They're not too difficult, but um, do you need to understand uh, scientific notation? Because a lot of stuff is put into scientific notation. That's... um just basically moving the decimal point around because you know anything with zeros you can times times 10 to the decimal point to move it over like um one milliamp is one millionth of an amp so it's point zero zero one is equivalent they equal one milliamp um you got milli um micro nano and pico and milli is to your negative third, 10 to the negative third. Micro is 10 to the negative six. Nano is 10 to the negative nine. And pico is 10 to the negative 12. So that's 12 places backwards from zero or from the decimal point. I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out the formula for LEDs. Alright, so resistance equals voltage supply subtract the voltage that's going to be used by the LED or the voltage drop divided by the current used or needed to run the LED. Um, your standard LED 5 millimeter yellow or red or green takes 
approximately 20 milliamps. And it drops 2 volts. So if I'm going to be using a 5 volt power supply, we're going to subtract that. So we're going to end up with 3 volts divided by 20 milliamps. And 20 milliamps equals 0 0.02. So if 3 volts divided by 0 0.02, because you got to divide it by the number, um, equals 150 ohms. So to run this yellow LED, I'm required to have 150 ohm resistor before it. Um, or since there's no resistance in the LED, current will be infinite. Um, explained in the formulas earlier because current equals voltage divided by resistance. If there's no resistance, then current is infinite. Because obviously you can't divide something by zero. And the resistor will turn into a little marshmallow and, you know, work for about half of a millisecond and never work again. <laughs> so, alright, we're going to um, design a little circuit and then we're going to build one. Our simple circuit would be we got a resistor and then we got a light emitting diode which is an LED and this is the symbol for a light emitting diode some of them have circles around them same thing alright um, then draw it back to our battery and we're gonna run a 5 volt battery or 5 volt power supply because there's you know, I'm sure there is a 5 volt battery but I don't have one. So that is our schematic and our R1 is 150 ohms. Now in practical terms I'm not going to run wires from the battery to the resistor, from the resistor to the LED, from the LED all the way around back to the battery. I mean I am but I'm not going to do it in the square fashion. I'm going to take my breadboard which I got right here and I'm going to take a little negative and I'm going to hook it between the negative rail or bus negative bus rail and between one of the lines right here let me see if I can focus that in any better than it is well, I guess that isn't going to go any better um, then on your LED you have two different pins that come out when you first get it the longer pin is the positive the shorter pin is the negative. Also, on the negative side, there's a little flat mark. I don't know if you can see. You see the flat side and then the round side? Well, the flat side is the shorter lead, and the round side is the longer lead, just in case your leads are the same size. <laughs> um, I'm going to take the negative side and push it into the breadboard, connect it to the negative like so. We're then going to take the 150 ohm resistor and I'm going to go between the the positive side and the positive rail. And I'll take it in there. So now that's what our circuit looks like. Pretty simple. Then I'm going to take and hook my negative to my negative rail, my positive to my positive rail, and I'm going to turn on my power supply. Amazingly, the light works. My power supply is set to 5 volts, and everything's working. Um, you want to get a little more technical and measure out everything. You can take your uh, multimeter. I'll turn that off for a minute. And I'm going to take my little test clips, which I showed you in the test equipment video. Connect them onto the end of my multimeter. And I'm going to pull the resistor out of the circuit. I'm going to connect my positive to the resistor, which is the most positive side. And I'm actually going to stick it down here in one of these rails so it's not moving all over the place. Yeah, you see what I did? Because I just noticed it. I'm about to do it again. 
It about messed me up. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to connect my positive and not my common to my positive side, and my common to the most negative side, which is connected to the battery. Then I'm going to set my multimeter to milliamps, and I want to measure how many milliamps actually runs through the lighting emitting diode. The diode is not going to light up, but amazingly, that is 0.2 milliamps. 0.2, um, That's what we said, right? And now I'm going to take my multimeter. I'm going to turn my power supply back off. Put my resistor back in the circuit. And I'm going to take my positive. I'll get to the positive side of the LED and the negative side of the LED. And I'm not going to take the LED out of the circuit. I'll leave it in the circuit. And I'm going to turn my meter to DC volts. And we're going to see what the voltage drop is across the resistor. Uh, 2.54, but that's not too bad. I mean, we're within tolerance. As we said, 2 volts for the voltage drop and 20 milliamps. And we're between... 5-10% so that's fine. Um, remember your resistors are measured in 5-10% um, to 10 depending on if they're gold or silver. 5% for gold, 10% for silver so we can calculate what it should be because a resistor can be either 5% above or 5% below so 5% of 150. I'm just going to punch it up on the calculator real quick times 0 0.05, that's 7.5, so 150 plus, I don't know, it's 157, but still, 0.5, it's just a habit, I always have to do this, subtract, and that's our high, and our low will be 142.5. Now, if I wanted to, I could rearrange that formula and solve for what my voltage would be with this resistance across the drop here, or my amperage with that one or above. And that, as long as it's within 5% of this and this, we're good. Electronics is not an exact science. It's a pretty close science, I guess. Um, because everything, nothing's perfect. Um, you can get it close to perfect, but never get it quite perfect. And most of the stuff you're going to be building and doing at home is going to be close, or if not, pretty far away from perfect, but as close as you can possibly get it. Because some of the more precision components that you're going to try to buy are a lot more expensive. I could use a um, precision resistor, which is a 1%, but um, I just didn't grab one. Um, Alright, well, I appreciate that, and um, just to give you a peek at one of the next segments we're going to do is um, on organizing resistors, and this is the way I like to do it. There's a lot of other ways to do it, but um, simple baseball cord organizers. Um, as you can see, I just mark each one, and it goes up gradually, and as you need to find a resistor, for instance, I used a 150 ohm resistor, so jump back here to 150 ohms, and bam. There's 150 ohms, no color codes, none of that. Um, when you first start out, you should learn all your color codes and stuff. Just make everything easier later on. But this right here, if you're getting used to it and you need to learn the color codes, a good way to do it. I mean, or at least bypass learning them, I guess. Um, you can use this for transistors, capacitors, well, ceramic capacitors, um, LEDs, stuff like that. It all works. Um, anything you can fit in a little baggie and slide it in the pocket. Alright, well, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys.